Hey, welcome to Monday's show. I am reading from Bill Mitchell's uh, vlog or blog uh, at bilbo.economicoutlook.net. And he puts up uh, helping ease food insecurity and starvation requires governments to ban bankers speculating on food prices. He achieves reading reports of the risk, uh, rising risk of food riots as food prices soar around the world. Uh, yeah, okay. I make sure I read that right. And vulnerable nations and, commun and communities are faced with increased food insecurity, which is a technical term that internationally uh, international agencies use. That actually means a risk of starvation. At the same time, governments allow hedge funds to take speculative positions on food as a traded as a traded commodity, which has been shown to not only increase food prices but also divert supply into storage uh, long positions, while the investors create artificial supply shortages and market instabilities. While people are being denied their stable food products, for example, corn speculation, there are many things that governments must do in this regard, including investing in sustainable agricultural systems to create local supply certainty, certainty, certainty there we go, improving the quality of diets, banning high sugar and salt levels, and more. But one of the most significant things that governments could do to keep food prices down and increase food security for vulnerable nations is to cooperate or yeah, cooperate on a global scale to outlaw any food speculation by hedge funds and the big investment banks. It is not only economically destructive to have large proportions of populations living with the constant threat of starvation, it is also unethical. Last week on the 13th, the World Trade Organization published a joint press statement with the IMF, World Bank, and United Nations World Food Program. Uh, the the face they oh wait, I'm sorry World Bank uh okay yeah uh, call for urgent coordinated action on on uh, food security. Uh, if you hear a fan, I apologize. It's really hot here. Uh, anyway, the fact that they thought it necessary to issue such a release tells me that the uh, capitalist system is broken if the aim is to enrich all. It is, of course, highly successful if the aim to enrich a few at the expense of the rest of us. The press statement referred to growing threats to food security, especially in vulnerable countries. They improved government to uh, implore governments to act by, in quotes, providing emergency food supplies and deploying financial support to households and countries facilitating unhindered trade and investing in sustainable food production and nutrition uh, security, or uh, of which I agree wholeheartedly. These organizations noted that, in quotes, the fallout of the war in Ukraine is added, adding to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic that now enters its third year, while climate change and increased uh, fragility and conflict pose persistent harm to people around the globe. Sharply higher prices for staples and supply shortages are increasing pressure on households worldwide and pushing millions more into poverty. The threat is highest for the poorest countries with a large share of the consumption from food imports, but Vulnerability is increasing rapidly in middle-income countries, which host the majority of the world's poor. World Bank estimates warn that for each one percentage point increase in food prices, 10 million people are thrown into extreme poverty worldwide. Energy and fertilizer inputs to farming are also rising in prices as a result of supply shortages. They consider the crisis may lead to social tensions, a.k.a. 
food riots like we saw in 2008 and 2007 and 08. The world could produce enough food, it just can't, cannot distribute it where it, it is needed, while gluts appear in rich nations and gluttons get fat. By any measure, that is a major failure of the system. Richer countries should make sure the poorest nations have sufficient capital, finance, uh, or financial and physical to produce sustainable uh, food supplies. The IMF obsession with turning uh, subsistence, yeah, subsistence uh, agriculture into export cash or crops is a, fail is a failed strategy. Instead, overseas, aid should be focused on creating sustainable, both in supply and e ecological terms, food producing sectors that provide security to local communities. Countries should never be left without the capacity to purchase imported food where, where necessary. That should be the role of the IMF and the World Bank, rather than destructive role by now play in producing conditions conducive for foreign capital to extract massive surpluses from poor nations without uh, commensurate, commensurate capacity development. You will also note that none, none, none of these organizations mention the role of the financial markets play in driving up food prices or causing starvation. Uh, Bill wrote about food speculation in these past blogs, which was uh, uh, January of 2012. Food speculation should be mostly banned uh, May 27, 2011. Uh, we should ban financial speculation on food prices. On uh, October uh, 17, 2016, he did one ending food price speculation. And October 18th of 2016, so basically next day, part two of it, ending food price speculation. The Chicago Board of Trade, or CBOT, uh, is one of the was is one of the first features and options. I keep doing that. <laughs> uh, options uh, unchanged in the world, and in 2007. Merged with Chicago uh, Mercantile Exchange, or CME, to form the CME group, which comprises four de derivative exchanges. It is one of the latest exchange for derivatives, uh, derivative tra uh, trading. I believe that's also the website, uh, website that the uh, Fed uses uh, to uh, calculate the, um, the uh, interest rates and upcoming interest rates as far as interest rate features. But anyway, um, let's see. Uh, uh, CBC bot uh, traditionally allows buyers and sellers of uh, commodities to interact to fix future prices and, quant and quantities to take out the uncertainty of production and sales. For food products, a farmer would use the exchange to hedge on the sale price as harvest approaches by selling forward for future delivery at a fixed price. This person would be considered rise risk averse and in purchasing such a contract would achieve certainty in ultimate price, which helped them in their production planning and cost management. On the other side of the future contract, futures contract would be the risk taking spe speculator, willing to guarantee the price to the farmer in the, ho in the hope bets or bet that the spot price on the day of delivery would be higher. If so, the speculator could offload the physical product at the higher price in the spot market and make a profit. They would incur losses if the spot price turned out to be lower than the agreed future price. So the risk is taken, uh, risk is taken by the speculator. Among type of another type, excuse me, of speculative uh, trade is when a floor, floor, excuse me, a flour mill wants to ensure that they are not short of supply of wheat and the hedge by entering a futures contract to guarantee delivery of a certain volume at a fixed price. These examples of speculations are considered beneficial to real producers because of, uh, it gives them certainty. But increasingly, this type of production, productive speculation has become a, my, uh, a minute proportion of the total speculative transaction in, in financial markets. 
in the 1990s is uh, as financial markets were deregulated in the interest of the large investment banks, commodities future trade in the U.S. was freed up, oh, freed up, excuse me, freed up, and so-called institutional uh, investors, uh, also known as large gamblers, were able to flood the derivatives trading markets. The proportion of the commercial traders entered uh, entering, excuse me, futures contracts has decreased relative to the speculative traders running bets against each other. For, to, so for a particular commodity like wheat or corn in any one season for the value of the speculative transactions will exceed the actual value of the harvest by many multiples. In particular, trading is so-called commodity indexes, which are calculated using the future contract prices for the various commodities that comprise the index boomed after deregulation. Der uh, derivative financial products devised by investment banks that are linked to the commodity uh, index, but do not require the investors to actually purchase any physical commodities have also, prolifer, uh, also proliferate since the turn of the century. A Senate committee report, uh, which was published in 09, uh, June 24th, excessive speculation in the wheat market found that, in quotes, the total value of the speculative investments in commodity indexes has increased and is estimated tenfold in five years, from an estimated 1. Uh, sorry, 15 billion in 2003 to around 200 billion by mid 2008. Before this rapid rise in speculative activity, future prices tended to tra track the, uh, the spot cash, spot or cash price for the commodities. There was normally a convergence between the future prices and price as the date of the contract delivery approached and the price in the cash marked. Yeah, uh, uh, price and cash markets. Uh, yeah, anyway. But impact of this rapid increase in speculative uh, trading in wheat and all agricultural commodities or yeah, commodities before the GFC, great, uh, great, the, just uh, the financial crisis, had the effect of driving future prices higher and ultimately undermining the ability of farmers, et cetera, to hedge uh, against uncertainty. The investment banks generate uh, massive profits from these bets in largely unregulated derivatives markets. Not only has this speculation created instability for producers, the opposite of the uh, original purpose of the futures exchanges, but it has also pushed up world pr food prices, which then impacts, uh, then impacts on those with little income. In some instances, the speculative, the speculative activity leads to prices tumbling, which then undermines the farm, in, uh, the, the farm income at a time when the IMF has been pushing governments to, in poor nations to transform their uh, substantive agricultural section, uh, sectors, which generate food security mostly into exports of cash crops dependent on, their wor on the world market. Uh, we have seen a vicious cycle of rise, rising foreign debt to achieve the transformation, prices falling in world markets, and then more uh, IMF World Bank debt to cover the inability to pay the original debt. These two references uh, reports from Global J uh, Justice UK, which emerged after the f last major food crisis in 07 08, are worth consulting if you are interested in more details. The first one is called Broken Markets, How Financial Market Regulation Can Help Prevent uh, Another Global Food Crisis. Number two, The Great Hunger Lottery, How Banking Speculation Causes Food, pr food Crisis. At present, it is clearly using, uh, clearly rising food prices that are causing havoc. Liz reports from the FAO, the State of uh, Food Security and Nutrition in, in World 2021, was released in uh, July of last year. I reported that there was a dramatic worsening of world hunger in 2020, around a tenth of the global population, up to 
811 million people were undernourished last year. Uh, already in the mid 2010s, hunger had started creeping upwards, dashing hopes of irreversible decline. Disturbingly, in 2020, hunger shot up in both absolute and proportional terms, outpacing population growth. Some 9.9 percent of all people are estimated to have been undernourished uh, last year, up from 8.4 percent in 2019. Overall, more than 2.3 billion people, or 30% of the global population, lacked year-round access to adequate food, this indicator known as the prevalence of moderate or severe food insecurity, uh, leaped in one year as much as the preceding light of five combined. In Australia, it is estimated that between 4% and 13% of the general population are food insecure. And 22%, 22 to 32% rather, of the indigenous population depend on location. Uh, Australia is also is one of the richest nations in the world, yet it cannot even feed significant portions of the population properly. The FAO recommends governments, one, introduce social protections to prevent families from selling uh, major assets in exchange for food. To scale up climate resilience across food systems, which should include ramping up uh, permaculture investments in all nations. Three, ensure the most vulnerable have access to cash transfers and work if they are able. Four, intervene along supply chains, uh, intervene along supply chains to lower cost of nutritious foods. Uh, helping growers get to markets, etc. While the FAO is silent on this, governments should make speculative trading in food other than the forward contracts directly made with producers illegal. Simple legislation, a legislative act would end the ability of investment banks to make huge profit or you know, uh, huge profits through starvation. By reduce poverty, the first thing that should be done uh, that, that should be done is create full employment and then provide adequate cash transfer to ensure income security is enjoyed by all. Number six, change consumer behavior, outlaw trans fats, reduce sugar and salt intake, etc. None of none of that will happen unless we demand our government to act. At present, they are captive to the food, uh, big food speculators and big pharma, big farm uh, corporations. The conclusion, this list will be easily imp implemented by government and would improve nutritional levels, food supply and increase productivity, but it should include the banning of food speculation, one of the, one of the more indecent ways in which the top end of town seek to profit. Well, I'd like to thank you for uh, watching this. Um, stay tuned for, uh, well, go on to my Substack later on. I will have uh, a, uh, another, um, another uh, article up, I guess, uh, or a uh, podcast up uh, talking about Social Security. Um, if you're interested in that, go to calvintaylor.substack.com. Uh, uh, otherwise, please subscribe to this channel. Please subscribe to that channel. And please support um, realprogressives.org. Uh, and yeah, thanks anyway. And uh, you guys have a good night. And we know that this burden falls particularly in an unequal way on black folks and other people of color, and we just gotta go ahead and put that in the testimony as well. But if you, yes, and especially black women, and if you are poor or among the working poor or the barely middle class in these United States of America, and you do what you were asked to do, what you were told to do, the thing, the very thing that you were told that was gonna lift you up, and you do that thing, and then you find yourselves walking across a stage with a backpack full of debt in, on your back and debt 
in your hands and a degree, and it is immoral to do so, and we calling it out. North Korea has that. 32 out of 33 modern industrialized countries have that. How are you going to pay for it? We're going to be like North Korea. We'll have to borrow the money from China. Where are you going to find the money?